Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another guide video. We're going to be taking a look today at a unit that has seen more change than probably any other unit so far in Season 1. And that's the Arbalists. Which have gone from being flat out one of the worst units in the game to where they are now. Absolute inner city monsters that can play a ranged role that archers and arc abusiers just can't fill in certain situations. Simply put, crossbows are the new muskets taking over a lot of the job that they used to do in previous patches. But before we get too far into the unit, I need to make sure that I announce the winner for the last giveaway. So congratulations to GG Lee, the random number generator selected your comment from the video, and I've reached out to you. So respond back as soon as you can and we'll get you your code ASAP. Alright, getting back to the unit, as we go through here, you'll see how Arbalist can be used differently than other ranged units in your sieges on attack and defense, and how they can break and stop formations that other ranged units struggle to touch. So as always, we'll start here with the unit tree and the veterancy lines. So into the unit tree, the Arbalist line can be completely unlocked for a pretty modest 13,200 honor. It's really 13,700 but you'll have unlocked the Levy Bowman in the starting quests anyways, so you'll basically get to skip that unit. And from there, both the Crossbowmen and the Arbalists are incredible units in their respective eras. I actually think the Arbalists are probably the best ranged unit in the entire Western line when taking cost and leadership into account, and definitely a good early game unit for lower level players to grind towards for quite a few reasons. They're cheap to grind towards, you get a great chivalric era unit on the way, they resupply easily, and the combination of crossbows and arbalists works pretty well on all maps without eating too much leadership, so strong melee can still be added, and I'm very comfortable running a build like this in high tier siege queues. Then into the veterancy lines, both lines are viable builds here, but my personal favorite is the top line which focuses more on direct damage dealing through range and armor penetration, where the bottom line focuses on ammo capacity, firing speed, and AI mechanics. The top line will grant plus 35% armor penetration, plus 9% range, plus 18% firing speed, and some small boosts to piercing damage and critical values. The armor penetration and critical values allow large damage output versus high armor units, and the range applies to the direct auto fire range, but also the drop off for firing out of range, but we'll see more on that later. The bottom line grants plus 40% ammo capacity, plus 24% firing speed, as well as some small bonuses to HP, defense, and head count, and the ability point blank fire, which makes the Arbalist focus fire on enemies that get close and increases their accuracy, and holds steady keeping them in place while under attack. This allows the unit to be more of a set and forget type unit in playstyle, and may be better for melee classes such as dual blades who might not be able to guard their unit and still capitalize on their skill set. For my particular playstyle as a longbow, most of the bonuses from this line are negated through regular gameplay though, so I choose the top line. That's rough. Now getting into the combat side of things, Arbalists fill a unique uh, middle yeah. role between archers and muskets. They can hero focus like muskets in the right situation, but they won't be quite as good at it. They can hit units on walls like archers, but they won't have the same great arc angles to get deep into their ranks above your head. But what they can do that neither muskets or bows can is push the line and blast through shields on units that are supposed to be able to sustain and hold ground and effectively ward off ranged fire. Their ability to penetrate shields and armor puts the Imperial Archibusier's elite skill for breaking shields to shame. As a unit, they are much more accurate and faster firing than muskets, and they're more accurate than bows, but they're slower firing than bows, with the damage numbers around the middle of the two. And that puts them in a perfect spot to tear up shield lines incredibly well. If you're able to combine this with some hard-hitting melee that brings some decent shield break values to the table, the two in combination are going to break basically whatever is in front of you with ease. It doesn't matter on the unit type, at this point the enemy is forced into an offensive stance where they must push and kill the units or watch their defensive lines be whittled down. Um, 
GG. allowing a foot in for your team to break in with and potentially take a point that seemed untakeable. Even against Imperial Shield Walls, Arbalest left to fire for a short time will have them falling apart with ease even without extra melee or AoE to knock them around. That just speeds things up. And that's how they're best used in general, I think. Either as the guardians of a choke or the breakers of a choke. Some of the most incredibly difficult areas in the game to break through feel the largest impact when Arbalists are set up right. Like here in Valley Fortress, pushing in for the home point up the stairs from the sea supply depot. The enemy is safe from trebuchets at all angles inside, has multiple angles for ranged and melee to set up from, and can set up multiple lines of shield walls to blind and block angles of attack for your ranged units to push in. And when the enemy has things like pikes or halberdiers set up on the sides of the entrance, it can be near impossible to break through with just melee. The Arbalists, even on the top line, come with a good amount of ammo, and if you can keep them set up like this to fire for a long time without losing too many men, they're going to make a hole for your team one way or another. And just like in this clip, once you've fired long enough to resupply and get back in line to fire again, the enemy won't be able to hold up their front line, and eventually the space will open up for a big push to the point. Of course, all the same things apply on the defensive side of well. If you've seen a lot of my other guides, a lot of breaking onto the walls with your melee relies around creating a foothold from your siege tower to protect your range and allow a safe spot for your units and heroes to push in from. Arbalest will tear apart that foothold before it gets fully established if you're there in time, and if you're arriving afterwards, as long as they're safe to fire, you're going to put in work, getting a lot of value for their shots on enemies who aren't focused on you. Of course though, they aren't only a choke point unit. If protected and angled right, they will slaughter from anywhere, and can do the same incredible work just stationed directly on flags or on the final point. I want you to take a look at the unit kill numbers on this one in particular, just stationed in the middle of the road defending the final flag. But because the enemy isn't focused on my unit, they just get volley after volley of free damage. They're losing ranged units one by one. Keep their heads down! Attack! Then, doing the same thing on attack, it's always much harder to get the perfect location set up attacking the final point compared to defending. But this is also where we start to see how the Arbalists are a little bit more akin to the Archibusiers than they are to Bowman. If you were playing a few updates ago, you'll remember that musket lines were able to fire with almost infinite range if using the manual focus fire skill, because their bullets would travel in a straight line even beyond their range limits, chunking out other ranged units much farther away than they were able to fire back from. This however was removed from muskets and seemingly added to crossbows instead, as they can now do the exact same thing. They do have damage drop off the farther out you shoot from your auto attack range, but it will allow the line to consistently fire in and whittle down protected enemy lines without having to find the exact perfect positioning in situations where that would mean certain death to get closer. And you'll want to get in the habit of using this skill anyways even when within auto attack range because the AI targeting can be super wonky and it's just better to rely on your own targeting whenever you can. Here, from this range, you almost can't even see the enemy anymore, but you can see the damage numbers rolling in slowly and tearing down a shield wall over time without any ability to defend itself. But after knowing where to position and how to shoot with them, there's only a couple things left to consider. Starting with what line formation to put them in, which is actually a lot more straightforward than it may seem. F2 and F3 are both offensive formations, but F3 is just flat out the better one as in 99% of situations, it's going to provide better angles for firing for the whole unit. But it also bunches them up close together, and so in some situations, F1 may be the better formation if you're expecting any type of incoming damage in return, especially AoE attacks or heroes who will have to run around hitting spaced out units to get the kill. After that, it's just a matter of where to focus your hero. Your damage isn't going to contribute much in comparison to the Arbalist output, and bashing around shields isn't really that important with them. 
So it's really best to just let your line just shoot things down and focus on keeping the unit alive. Watch out for cav charges coming from different angles, keep a look at your back, watch for heroes diving in, and clear out ranged units that might be able to focus your arbalists before yours can hit them. Keeping them alive to dump out their ammo is the most important thing because you know that as long as they're shooting, stuff is dying. And that's going to be the end for this unit guys, so thanks for watching. I did touch a little bit on the crossbows as well as this, and really the crossbows are just the arbalist's younger brother in terms of gameplay. They do all the same things with slightly lower efficiency, but if you'd still like to see me go over them as well and point out some of the smaller differences between the two, make sure to let me know in the comments below. And check out the Discord in the description where I post a lot of info and discussions about the game that might not make it into a full video. Thanks again for watching everybody. I hope this helped you decide if the Arbalists are the next ranged unit to add into your lineup. And take care. Have a good one.